Okay, can I tell you, I have been making the best, the best coffee of my life this month. You just take any whole bean coffee, grind it with mulling spices, like the stuff that you get for mulling wine. It's like allspice, cinnamon, cloves, something else, and a little cinnamon. Put that in your coffee maker, just a basic ass McCafe, no, Mr. Coffee. Coffee pot, then put a little maple syrup and a little soy milk. I know, you would think God himself made this coffee. I also have a kombucha, I also have a water. Let us answer some dating questions. <laughs> I don't know why, as a single person, I'm like, let's do dating questions. But I was thinking about it and I thought, wouldn't you rather, if you're in college class, wouldn't you rather have your professor be somebody who, okay, three choices, three choices for professor. Someone who's never worked in the field they're teaching in. Someone who's currently working in the field and doing it like full time, weirdly, or somebody who has worked in the field, but is currently a little bit, a little distance from it and is focused on teaching the masses. Wouldn't you rather have that person in the middle? That's me. I've dated, I've done the thing. I'm currently not, <laughs> we can get into it, but I feel like that's a good spot for a little bit of bird's eye wisdom. wisdom. We'll see. So I put up on my story, on my Instagram story, do you have any questions about dating? You can also DM me a story and ask for advice. So let us just see all the responses. Oh wow. Oh wow. Okay, we're not gonna do everything. We're just gonna pick and choose the best ones. I don't know if I like this kombucha brand. Limited release sparkling cranberry. Hmm. Kombucha girl. Well, <laughs> shout out, I love ya. But let's just get into it and I'll put like the screenshot up here while we're talking. And if I don't get tears, um, try again next time. Okay, uh, we're starting strong, starting intense. Is love within our community really gone? Are we supposed to find love through hookups? I'm gonna assume you're saying gay community, but it could be y young people, youth as well. No, it's not gone. Um, there's definitely hookups. There's definitely hookup apps. There's definitely hookup culture. I think that's always been a thing for as long as humans have been able to hook up, which I assume is as long as we've been around. <laughs> um, I don't think it's gone, but I think you have to be a lot more intentional about what you're, what you're going to allow and what you're not going to allow. It can happen to the best of us. I get it. Somebody looks really good you get love bombed or it, it's a quick thing and then they move on to the next thing and you feel like you missed out or did something wrong. It's not you, but at the same time, we have to get really, 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 if our desire is love, we have to get really, really choosy on what we, what we consider to be loving to us. Hope that makes sense. Okay, one done. I've actually done a whole 180. I think I like it. It's just super tart. Super fermented. Um, how do you get yourself out there? No one has asked me out before. I don't know if anyone's asked me out either. I don't know if people do that much anymore. <laughs> I was talking to a friend and we were saying that so much of this dating world is kind of fragmented behind these different apps. Somebody will ask, will find you on an Instagram and ask for your snap or ask for your number. they will find you on TikTok and follow you there. That's very, gamified and i think that we now have an expectation of oh i'm gonna find somebody through these through these apps but asking out in person is hard it's really tough i don't know if i've ever have i asked someone out in person i guess i have that kombucha Ooh, it is fermented um how do you get yourself out there no one has asked me out before i think it's we need to focus on building connections building community it's not really about getting yourself a date. It's more about casting a wide net as a person, knowing a lot of people. Most of the successful things I've seen have started because somebody knew a friend and that friend was like, hey, I know this person that might be good for you. That really does happen. And that, that can be a really good way to get a date, a good quality date where you're not just shooting your shot always on apps. <laughs> How to find someone genuine and rich. Um, genuine, you'll know it. It's pretty clear to me when somebody is, is putting on airs to make themselves seem attractive versus when they just have a natural charisma. Rich, I've heard it said that it's just as easy to marry a rich person than it is a poor person. If that's your desire, I would start to build wealth 
this isn't really the video for that, but I kind of think birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> Is that the birds of a feather fly together? You don't want there to be an imbalance. So if you're somebody who, no shame, has zero dollars and has no income. I think the only way you would find a rich person is if they really enjoyed kind of having that money power over you. And I don't know if that's the foundation for a real lasting good relationship. So there you go. Is real lasting gay love unattainable because of our generation's upbringings slash culture? Is real lasting gay love unattainable? But I, I don't think it's unattainable, but I think it is elusive. But I also think that's true for straight love too. I, I don't think lasting love is ever easy. Say you wanna be in a 40 year marriage, you're gonna to have to wake up every single day and choose that marriage for 40 years. That's on the self as much as it is on finding the right person. So look inward. <laughs> I'm gonna start giving a little bit um, salty advice here too, why not? Sorry if I offend. At what age do you realize you're cooked if you haven't had a single date yet? Never, honey, it's fine. I'm, people need to walk with their whole worth in front of them. I don't think there's any reason to carry that baggage into the room. If that's something you feel insecure about, I would go to therapy, I would talk to someone, talk to a friend. But if you are gonna go on a date, if you haven't had one yet, then just go on a date. <laughs> Is that advice? <laughs> I know I'm not being very kind there, but I, what I'm saying is whether or not you've been on one date or a million dates, you still have to be on the date you're on, or you still have to get the next date regardless. It doesn't, it's not like um, it accrues and suddenly like dates just fly at you or they become easier. You still have to be present. So focus on being present. Me and my boy looking for a nice guy for drink, game, and sex. Any advice on how to find a perfect one? I think you're gonna need to go on the apps. That's what that sounds like to me. <laughs> or, you know, be that couple at a bar, like, we really liked your vibe. Um, how do you find relationships in a world of avoidant gay men? Back to this question, um, avoidant, avoidant. And gay, I agree that it can happen in the gay world, but I think it happens in the straight world too. Avoidance is, you know, there's always, there's always another carrot with social media. There's always a hot body or an interesting personality or, a look into a life that might look better than yours, we know this. But really, 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 if you want to find a relationship, I would try to find somebody who's not super into drinking the Kool-Aid of social media, because they're always gonna get messaging about how being avoidant is okay, or jumping to the next thing is okay. So if that's what you're looking for, I would find someone a little more offline. <laughs> I'm a top and I'm really into an I'm a top and I'm really into another top. What do we do? Okay, not to go on a little tirade here, but I think we need to, this might be a young person thing, this label, label, label thing that's happening. You're a person connecting with another person. You're not a label or a, a position connecting with another position. It's enticing, of course, to feel like we belong and label ourselves and say, these are my preferences and this is what I do in the bedroom. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but be careful not to limit with the labels. You can, of course, do what you wanna do and have your preferences, but if you like this person, you'll find something fun to do together. <laughs> and I'm not even saying like physically, like maybe you guys will end up being friends and that's good too. Or maybe, you know, you'll be, you'll just kiss sometimes and that's fun. Uh, don't, don't keep the space queer. You know, you're, you're queer, you're in a space where you're already not assigning traditional things to your life. So why, why double down on that and why close your own mind? Yeah, let's, let's cool it, all of us, on the labels. I, I think that that's gonna limit us. What, okay, another one I'm gonna be spicy on. <laughs> what do I do to stay out of the friend zone? There's nothing you can do to stay out of the friend zone. Look at me, look at me. If they're gonna friend zone you, it's done. You, we all need to stop shifting and twisting and trying to not be in a friend zone or to make someone like us. Uh-uh. They don't like you. They don't like you. And the moment you drop that weight, you fly. You fly to the next thing. And I don't know if you could ever make a relationship work. Sorry, people, if this worked for you, let me know. But like fighting to get out of the friend zone with somebody 
that's always gonna leave you on the back step and always make you feel like I had to fight for this or I had to change something for this. Not a good foundation for a relationship. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. If they wanna friend zone you, you're a friend. <laughs> Sorry. Are you dating anyone? If you aren't, do you have your eyes on someone? I'm not dating anyone. There's people that I find very attractive, very cute. I have chemistry with them. But at this present moment, I'm not really looking to relate in that way. So yes and no. <laughs> Back to hating it. Mm -mm. She has something going on that she needs to work on. <laughs> What's your experience with dating apps? And do you recommend them? I don't think I've ever used a dating app. Um, well, I mean, social media, I think, is a dating app, like Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Somebody cute follows you, you follow back. Bada bing, bada boom. I guess that's my experience, but I've never done like a Tinder, a Hinge, a Grinder. It, 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 it. <laughs> that's my answer. It's been two years and I can't seem to forget my last situationship. What do I do? Situationships are like things that are things, but not relationships. Those are the harder ones to remove from your psyche, I think, because there's always that press of like fantasy on it or like, oh, what what could have been or what wasn't. Can't seem to forget. I, I think forgetting and moving on is overrated, honestly. I don't think there's really a need to do that. If you're somebody who has a big heart, that's what you have and that's how you feel through the world. And that, I guess my advice is make art out of those feelings or make something out of that. Um, don't put an expectation on it to go away. It probably won't. I have situationships from the past that still give me a little heart twinges when I think about them or certain parts of them, even though I know they shouldn't be. But those feelings can be motivating uh, for, for other experiences or things. So don't fight that. The weirdest date you had. I've had a lot of dates that aren't dates, or like I found out later that it was a date. I, I remain a little oblivious when somebody is pursuing me. So anytime I was on a couch and I was like, wait, oh, <laughs> that would be an example. When it was your last relationship, it's been a couple years, mm, not quite. It was a long one. So I was in a LTR and now I'm single for probably a year and a half or so. Why do you think men are so f afraid of commitment now? Men have always, men, men, <laughs> the SpongeBob imagination, but men. If a man is playing that game with his life, if he's someone who wants to chase carrots, he's gonna chase carrots. I think we have to let people be who they are and not stress too much about it when they reveal themselves. I also think you'll know pretty soon and it might be on us to clock that immediately and just move on. If what you're looking for is commitment, you said, mm -mm -mm -mm. afraid of commitment, yeah. You'll know, you'll know, like almost right away if somebody is afraid of commitment or is willing to commit or wants something. So why do you think they do that? I honestly think it's, it's always been a thing. It's unfortunate, but we can't change others. We can only work on ourselves. <laughs> in the past, have you felt like people you date were more interested in your personality or your body? Um, people I date? I don't know. I can't say. <laughs> I can't say what they were more interested in. It kind of all came out in the wash where they were interested in me. Uh, so. I, I haven't thought about it much, but I'm sure half would fall one way, half would fall another. Um, again, that's kind of like working on the self thing. We can't worry too much about what is attractive about us. We kind of just have to exist and attract. How long should we be dating before using cute nicknames around friends and family? From moment one, I don't care. <laughs> Go with God, do it. <laughs> What's your biggest insecurity in queer dating? Um, I'm not really insecure in dating. Maybe that's not relatable, but I kind of feel like, and maybe you've gotten the tone through this, that there's not much you can do, <laughs> period, in life. There's not much you can do to make someone attracted to you or not, or make something happen or not. It, it really is either there or not there. And 
that brings peace i think for me there's a lot of things i worry about in life but dating is not one of them i, I try to let that flow as Tony Braxton would say, let it flow. <laughs> I mean, of course I have insecurities, but I try not to bring them to my partner's door or to my date's door and be like, I'm insecure about this. You know, I heard good advice that was like, never think on a date, oh, I hope I like them. Or wait, <clears throat> got that wrong. Never think on a date, oh, I hope they like me. I hope they like me. It's, I hope I like them. And just stay on that wavelength of being the chooser and you'll be fine. Okay. Thoughts about being on a fifth date with a guy and him having a grinder notification on his phone. Fifth day grinder. This is what we were talking about with the commitment thing. You've got to clock that as that being who he is. He's somebody who does that. Maybe you on a fifth date are thinking we're more exclusive or whatever. He's not that person. So that's just information you have to fold in and you can't, you know, don't be resentful. If you want to talk about it, talk about it. But just know that's your baseline now. That's who this person is, and I wouldn't expect him to not get another grinder notification if you guys were to move forward. So if you like that, go with that. If you don't like that, now's your chance to choose and say, okay, bye. And you can communicate why, and something could come of it, but that's kind of what, I don't know why I put this. Do we think this is cute, yes or no? Comment below. <laughs> How do you figure out if a guy is trustworthy earlier on? You know, Maya Angelou says, when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. So, believe them when they show you that they're trustworthy, when they do what they say they're gonna do, when they set up a date and they... Ooh. I'm getting a call. You can call me back once you forget. I didn't mean to interrupt your process. Oh no, it's totally fine. I'm just trying to do more of the YouTube thing. I broke up with my ex around 10 months ago and we're still texting like we're together. In a little mm, face, as in like, that's bad. I don't think that's bad. I mean, texting like you're together, make sure, you know, your heart is okay with that. Like there's nothing wrong with connection and talking to somebody, but if it's hurting you, stop doing it. Do you like Spanish? Claro que sí, um, estoy practicando mi español ahora, ahora y uh, quiero hablar más en español con personas, con, con quisiera ir en una cita con una persona que es un hispano hablante, no sé. Um, yeah. How does your online presence affect your dating life? Not saying your OP is bad. Uh, it doesn't affect it because dating is real, but I think it, it also makes this veil of like, maybe there's more choices than there really are because a lot of people are sliding into the DMs. It appears as though there's more people, but as you kind of like push those people and see what their vibe is, I think you find out pretty quickly what their intentions are. So um, you have to just kind of keep it pushing and say, okay, I, I have to take my own advice here and not try to make something out of what is clearly just a desire to hook up or whatever. In your opinion, when is it appropriate to ask to move together? Like move in together, I'm guessing, whenever you both want to, just keep talking about it. it it's fun. It, it, I don't think you should fear it too much because the worst that could happen if you break up is that you move apart and you, you're still gonna have to break up no matter what. Of course, it makes it a little more complicated, um, but it's one bad week you know, of like dividing stuff versus never trying. So do it if you want, but don't, don't do it. Cause I said, I, I hate this one straight guy and he hates me. And we got into a fight and ended up kissing. WTF do I, do I do now? <laughs> uh, a real enemies to lovers situation. I guess either keep kissing or keep fighting. Whatever's turning y'all on. <laughs> biggest green flags when you're dating someone. Do they make you laugh? Do they think of you? And also weirdly a green flag is like not too much communication because that can be I think a sign of love bombing, like not pure obsession with you. Don't be looking for obsession, that's a red flag. I think a healthy amount of communication, a balanced slow amount is a green flag. Why is gay dating so hard? I've only ever been in one relationship, two years long, I'm 20. That's awesome. That's great. That's more than a lot of queer people never date ever slash don't start till they're in their 40s, 50s, 60s. Don't quantify anything. Your journey's your journey. What are you truly attracted to personality wise? Funny, 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 funny. I love a funny guy because it means they're smart. It means they're perceptive. It means, yeah, funny, funny is everything. Uh, 
if if a guy isn't funny, it's like, hello, is anyone home? <laughs> okay, um, let me refresh that and see if anyone else wants to come in here under the wire. And then I'll go into the DMs for some stories and we'll wrap it up from there. Okay, I'm gonna have to fight through a little, little bit of spam here. <laughs> My DMs are <laughs> insane, insane. Um, okay, for starters, I'm gay. I just turned 18, let me screenshot these. For starters, I'm gay. I just turned 18 not too long ago and was wondering how fast I should dump, jump into the dating pool or just wait for the right moment. Like, how did you do it? Honestly, my advice as an 18 year old is be careful. Be careful, be careful. People are not always good actors. You may find out later that they maybe liked you because you were young and that's scary and tough to hear, but I would say date around your age. That's Honestly, I think that's really good advice for an 18 year old is date another 18, 19, 20 year old. And I wouldn't push it much past that. I'm sorry, but there's a lot of people that can take advantage um, in the world. So that would be my advice. That might feel limiting, but it's gonna save you a lot of trauma. <laughs> Not to laugh at trauma, but it, it's just the truth. I don't get feelings for anyone. What should I do? Nothing. You might be in that season, you know, asexuality is a thing, demisexuality is a thing. Not everybody is sprung all the time in every season. There's a lot of factors as to why. So I would say just chill and enjoy that time. It'll come. Okay, here's a, here's a story time, a little bit of story tea. Long one, but juicy. <laughs> so I had a fling back in high school with this super attractive dude. Didn't work out because I was too clingy. I sent him a message three months ago and he was trying to meet up with me, but he eventually ended up ghosting me, not reading my messages. I think y'all know what I'm gonna say. Also, he's been in a five year relationship. I think y'all know. And I seen dreams he's trying to get out. I'm not sure, seen dreams he's trying to get out. What do I do? You look at me, you do nothing. You do nothing with this man, this man, is capital T toxic. Write it down on a piece of paper. Write it down. This man is toxic. The, uh, da, 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 he was trying to meet up with me, but ended up ghosting me. Eh. <laughs> also, he's been in a five year relationship. Eh. I don't care if he's trying to get out. If, if you were to pursue something with this man and five years in, he would do this to the next person. This is who he is. I'm sorry, but it's just the truth. When people show you who they are, believe them the first time. Five years in to y'all's relationship, he's gonna be trying to get with somebody else. It's just what it is. You have to find a way to move on. Protect yourself. Run from this man. Run. <laughs> That's my advice. Um, can you choke me out? No. <laughs> Not a question about dating. Um, I'm gonna s probably stop there because a lot of these are just thirst messages and less questions. I think that's a good place to stop. Uh, I really appreciate your your questions and I hope you like, had fun with this advice, uh, whether you're dating, single or whatever. I'd love to hear your comments down below. Honestly, you could write more questions and maybe from the YouTube comments, we could do another video. Um, and let me know if you like this slower, longer, advicey style content, because I'm a yapper. I could yap all day. Um, yeah, love yourself, and I hope I didn't piss anyone off <laughs> too bad. Okay. Um, cheers with this. I don't recommend. <laughs> Final verdict. Love ya.